What's up, YouTube? So I thought I would just do a very quick video just to preface the one you're about to watch, just to explain uh, and to apologize as to why it is so long. The reality is a plastering set takes around three and a half to four hours to complete. And there's a lot of stages, there's an awful lot of information in it. And to try and condense it down without losing the quality is proving to be very difficult. That said, what I'm planning on doing is just taking the highlighted uh, points of this video and making a much shorter one. So if you don't want to watch the very long video, which this one is, uh, I'll be uploading uh, the shortened version uh, very soon to my channel so that you can see just the main steps uh, very quickly, the process to plastering uh, to save a little bit of time. However, if you do choose to watch all the way through to the end on this video, well done. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Welcome YouTube. If you're here, it's possibly because you want to know how to plaster a wall. Would you like to be able to create walls as silky smooth as these? Stay tuned and we'll go through a step-by-step -step process on how you too can turn out walls to this standard. So today uh, we're gonna go through how to plaster a wall. The job we're on at the moment, it's a, a new build house. We've gone through the whole house, a plaster boarding and plastering, upstairs and downstairs. And the last bit to finish is just uh, this hallway that you can see on the camera. Now normally, uh, when you're plastering, you'd naturally start with the ceiling first, just in case anything dropped on the finished walls that you already plastered. So normally you would start with the uh, ceiling, but unfortunately uh, I don't quite have enough beads just to finish off uh, beading up the ceiling. So we're actually just going to focus on uh, two or three walls today. But we'll go through the whole process. It's going to be a two coat finish. Uh, and unfortunately, there will be no sponging on this one either. However, I do thoroughly recommend looking into sponge floating, especially if you are new to plastering. But to start with, uh, this is the job that we are going to be doing today. So we'll be tackling some of these walls. You'll see these have all been dot and dabbed as per the request of the homeowner. So to start with, uh, with fresh plasterboard, you begin with a tape and uh, by putting scrim tape against all the joints. So we'll be doing that now. So on new plasterboard, where all the joints are, you'll need to use tape like this, which is not very visible in the camera as it's gray, uh, but this is just a standard uh, 50 millimeter fiber mesh tape. And what you do is you just apply this to all joints. Now what we tend to do is we just use a trowel to cut the joints. So, across the joint in the middle, than carrying this family knife around, just cut it off like that. And what you'll do is go through all the joints, go through all the joints in the areas that you're going to plaster on your job uh, with this scrim tape. If you're doing what's called a re-skim, where you're not plastering on fresh plasterboard, you'd need to use something like PVA glue, a couple of coats of that, or something like blue grit uh, on the walls before you were to plaster it. So you know, really important step one is to get your prep work done correctly. Okay, so now all the scrim taping on the area that we're gonna plaster is now finished. So now that the walls are fully prepped for what we need, uh, we will start with the plastering. So we're gonna knock up uh, about a bag and a half to two bags on the first coat, which will need roughly around for, for two bags, it would need just over two black buckets full of water. Uh, a bag and a half would need about a bucket and three quarters uh, of water. So we're gonna do that now and start mixing up.
Okay, so that has had just over uh, a bucket and a half of, of water. Uh, the consistency is not too stiff, not too wet. It, it is a bit of a, a, a misconception. You think, oh, if I knock it up really wet, especially if you're new, that means I'll have ages on it. It's kind of one of these things, if you knock it up uh, too wet, it's just very messy, it's very hard to put on. Uh, same way when you knock it up too stiff, what ends up happening is you end up putting more on the hawk and more on the trowel, and it ends up just spewing over the side, so it just throws it on the floor. Um, a good gauge to it is it should be able to hold its shape on the bucket trowel or on the hawk fairly well. Um, it shouldn't be difficult. Um, to, to, to keep its shape. So, namely, if you're putting it on the hawk or the handboard uh, and it's flattening itself out um, immediately, it's too wet. Uh, at the same time, it's, if it's a fight to get it out of the bucket, it is likely a bit too stiff. But if you work with the assumption that just over a black bucket full, and that's assuming you're about an inch off the top, just a little bit over, will do about a bag of water. So, a bit of a useful tip when you first start. When you load up your hawk, it would be a good idea not to do more than one scoop at a time. But very important, a useful tip is that it, the, the gear, the plaster will want to slide around the hawk uh, when you first put it on. Uh, so what you want to do is create some kind of suction. And the easiest way to do this is just to give it a very gentle little shake. Not a lot, just needs to move the plaster a little bit. If you do that, on every single time you put a new plaster on your hook, you'll be able to turn it upside down and it will keep the plaster um, in place as it were. Very important, if you do that, it makes it so much easier in not dropping stuff on the floor. The reality is there are loads of ways in which you can do it. You can either start from the top or the bottom. You can even go in the middle if you really wanted to. Um, Sometimes it really depends on the type of wall that you're plastering. With things like uh, where we're boarding and you've got scrim tape, I personally like to just fill out the tape before I start. It's a preference thing. Now, I won't bother with uh, bother teaching the uh, the method of getting the hawk. Uh, the plaster from the hawk to the trowel. It's one of those things that it's easier if you just practice to get a feel for it. But the general uh, gist of it is, if you have the trowel at 90 degrees from the hawk, lift it up and then just wipe it off. That is really the most basic way of getting the hawk from the uh, the plaster from the hawk to the trowel. With a bit of practice, you can do a little bit of a shake, and then you can cut it off, and you can take a small amount of plaster rather than taking a whole lot. But to just to get practiced, um, use that 90 degree and scrape it off is the easiest place to start. So the two methods of really starting a wall, you've got, you can either start from the bottom, and work up like that. Now this is probably by far and away, the fastest way to cover a wall. It's actually also my preference as well, and the reason being is because I'm quite tall, I'm six foot two, so I can get fairly close to the top of the ceiling line. So, just ever so slightly overlap the wall, um, overlap the plants I've just been on. At this point, we're not pushing uh, very hard. And basically, the action you're looking to try and achieve is have it pretty much flat to the wall when you first put it against the wall. And as you lift up, you're flattening the trowel. If you flatten it too early, you'll just have a big lump at the bottom of the wall. Uh, if you leave the angle too much, 
you just scrape the plaster clean off. Again, it's one of those things where it's a little bit of trial and error, something very difficult to actually show on the video. So it's just a case of start from the bottom, just slightly overlap the plants from really being on. Very important as you go up and then you come back down as you go up and then come back down to rock the trowel so you tip the trowel because what you can find is if you just put it straight back down the back edge of the trowel will dig, in, dig into the plaster Now this section's done, I'm just going to go back and run the top. Easiest way to do this, I find, is to use the toe of the trowel and just hook a piece on, hook some plaster on like that. Tie the trowel into the corner. Going around the door frame, this is going to have architrave. You don't need to get unnecessarily close to the architrave, uh, to the door frame, and cover it in plaster for no reason. There's nothing wrong with just giving it a, an inch or so. Just to keep the just to keep the uh, door frames a little bit cleaner. Now the other method for filling out the top pass is actually to pull down from the top. So like this, and don't recommend this. Because what can happen, especially if you do multiple passes like this, you can get filled up just across here. And what happens is if, if you keep scraping the plaster off at the top, what you can find is you actually just end up dropping loads on the floor. So for me, the easiest method is side to side, personally. And especially if you're new to plastering, it's definitely an easier way to keep the ceiling line straight. So what we're going to do now is just run the rest of this wall and the rest of the walls and we'll catch up once it's all on. Okay, so we are now done. We've applied the first coat. I forgot to mention uh, that I have a timer running uh, and we're up to about 17 minutes. And what we are left with is just that initial application of plaster. It doesn't have to be perfect, although obviously the neater it is, um, the easier it is to flatten. So, just a couple of things to mention. 
So plaster in general, if it's knocked up about the consistency that um, you're shown uh, at the start of the video, obviously not ridiculously sliff, stiff and not so sloppy that it won't hold its shape on the hawk or the handboard, you should have around 30 to 40 minutes working time with it. So whenever the bag says to apply the plaster, wait 20 minutes and, and etc. so forth, it is on the assumption that um, it has been applied at a reasonable rate. If you are new to plastering, it is definitely worth not knocking up, mixing up more than a bag at a time. Um, a good thing, place to start really is, is look at small walls uh, and possibly um, mix up maybe three quarters uh, of a bag of plaster and then do the second coat in about a quarter, roughly something like that. Uh, generally, the first and the second coat, usually the second coat is half what you put on in the first coat, unless you're trying to build out, unless you're trying to straighten uh, beyond the three to four mil that uh, m the multi finish British chips recommend. If it's really that bad, then you need a backing plaster like hard wall or bonding to straighten uh, the walls out first. But what we're going to do now is uh, the, we're going to flatten the walls just to neat them up initially. Now there are two methods of doing this. One is a lot easier than the other. The first one requires you to have a special tool. Now we've shown these in our videos before. This is uh, it's called a spatula. Um, it's very similar to things like speed skims and what have you. There are a lot of companies that make them now. Uh, Rafina, Marshalltown, I think, do a variation. Um, Ox do one, etc. Um, this is our preferred one. I'll link a uh, put a, a link in the description as to the video where we're talking about this and as to why we like uh, this one specifically. But what I'll do is I'll show you the two methods. So the first one, obviously, using um, essentially what is a speed skim. The one we've got is plastic. And then the, uh, the second uh, way is using a trowel. So we're just going to do an initial flatten just to tidy up a little bit. Obviously, the plaster is a little bit wet at the moment. Um, so we are going to have to just touch up again uh, before we lay that second coat down. So what we do is we will flatten that now. So the first thing you want to do, and you do with all new tools that you're using, as in when you're, you're about to change tools, is, is wet the tool down. Very important, stops the plaster dragging. What we're going to do is we're going to start top to bottom, at about 30 to 40 degree angle, and you're just going to pull it up. Have a little look at it, I've got a bit of dry dirt in the gear, so just fill those in. And there's a little bit of a low spot here. With the top, you're looking to get right into the corner. And just drag down right into the corner. A little bit of a low spot here, so just fill that out. So here's the opportunity at this point just to fill out any obvious low spots. You're not trying to get this perfect by any means, um, but just any opportunity you have just to neaten it up.
every so often, just want to uh, just clean off the gib you've got. You're not looking to try and take too much off. This is applied fairly, fairly tight. It's only about a mil and a half to two mil maximum um, applied on these walls. And again, pull up from the top. Just in the corners, it's just worth pulling out. Straighten them up. So that's the first method of flattening using a spatula or a speed skim. Um, and again, you can see that it's, it's still very, very wet. So you can get a pretty flat finish with minimal effort. So now what we'll do is we'll have a look at flattening using a trowel. And you'll see immediately why uh, it's a lot easier to use a speed skimmer. So we position the camera here. So here, you want to start from the top. And you're looking to get right into the corner. And I'm pushing fairly hard. Trowel is, is very flat to the wall. It's very, very flat to the wall. Pushing in nicely. Nice and hard. Really trying to fill out those corners. Some gear. Just push that in. At this point, it's probably not worth going side to side uh, at the moment. However, it is useful just in the corner, just to come out from the corner like this, just to fill that out, just to make sure there is gear nice and firm in the corner. Also very, very important as well, when it comes to the bottom, to make sure the skirting um, sits straight. You just want to make sure you run your trowel sideways. It's very important on any wall to do this. Then once you've done that, what we're gonna do, you're just gonna go from the bottom, nice long strokes. It's a bit thin against the door frame here. So, just fill these out. Nice long strokes. Overlap by about an inch or so. Again, nice long strokes. I'm going to try and take out any bubbles that you might have in the plaster where it's not been worked in very well and then fill out any, any little scratches you might have. Then, nice little stroke. When it comes to the corner, just run your trowel into the corner like so, as flat as you can. And what it'll do is it'll just stop any dips that you might receive or get in the in the corner of the wall. So that's the that's being flattened. You can see straight away it's a lot harder to get it as flat as you can with the speed skim. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same on this wall here, just to make life a lot easier. Uh, I'm just gonna use the speed skim, but throughout.
Okay, so we have been going for about 43, uh, 44 minutes. So what we are now gonna do, um, while off camera, I've just run the uh, spout over the walls and the trowel over the wall as well, just to give it another quick pass, just to flatten it in a little bit more. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start knocking up for the next set, uh, for the next coat. Now, currently it's still a little bit wet. And the reason I like to start knocking up that second coat uh, now is usually by the time, if you wait until it's pretty much almost nearly touch dry before you start knocking up, um, the two coats, they don't really bond together very well. So really, if it's wet, give it five or 10 minutes, start knocking up. And then by the time you've knocked up the plaster, uh, cleaned all your tools and what have you, usually a good five, 10 minutes has passed by uh, and then it's usually pulled in enough for you to lay that second coat down. Okay, so second coat has been mixed up. It is about three quarters uh, of a bag, something like that, which is about right uh, for first coating on a bag and a half. Uh, it was just slightly over and a bag and a half. I had about two hawkfuls left over, which I threw. So, same as the first coat we're gonna do is just use a bit of gear on the back of the bucket trail. Just rub it in. And then the consistency we're looking to achieve. So, if I put it on the hawk, it should still, it should hold its shape. You can see that it's not spreading itself out uh, unassisted. It's not going, going all over the place. At the same time, remember we said that little trick as you put some plaster on, just give it a little shake. You can see it's instantly just flattened itself out. And doing that will enable you to tip that upside down. And that will probably quite literally stay there all day. That is going nowhere. If you, didn't do that, you run the risk of it sliding off. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start back where we were before and we're put a second coat over everything that we've plastered in the order that we put it on. But just so you can see now, the wall is starting to starting to pick up. So now's about the right time to put that second coat on. Looking at the timer, we are now up to about 52 minutes. So looking for about half the thickness of the first coat. So we're looking at around about a millimeter or so on the second coat. Looking for nice, long, clean strokes. Same, everything's the same. As you did the first time. Try and do is you're applying a bit more pressure as you're trying to push that second coat into the first. Remember to rock the trowel as you come back down. What you'll see is some plasters go like this. It's called half mooning, where you're doing C shapes in the wall. This is a terrible method of applying plaster. I thoroughly do not recommend that. 
um, definitely when you're putting a plaster it is not only significantly faster just to go up and down it's a lot less work because what you find when you're doing C shapes is you're constantly going back over what you've done and you also tend to get a build up on the top and the bottom of the C so it's a terrible way of plastering you see some people you see some people do that don't use that method up and down um, sometimes it's worth just flicking the top off uh, so you just tip over as you hit the top but when it comes to the middle of the wall doing this type of method this sort of uh, way of applying the plaster that is bad form do not apply plaster like that what you're trying to achieve is something like this up to the top and back down again do that a couple of times we want to go over that a couple of times just to get the air out of the plaster then again overlap what you've done by about an inch and then up and then down it's much neater and it's much faster doorway I'm just gonna fill it out like this just purely so I don't unnecessarily get plaster on the doorway they are tape it's just good practice just keep it as clean as you can what we're now going to do is we're just going to go over all of the walls same as what we've done here we'll catch up once that's done Okay, so now we've applied um, two coats of plaster. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a quick flatten with the uh, speed skim, the Rafina speed skim. Uh, it's about uh, an hour and 15 minutes uh, since we started. So we're just gonna go over it all, with the exception of the wall that's being flattened with a trowel. Uh, because the plaster is still quite wet, um, using the to flatten it in with the trowel straight away would gain very little but with these because it's a much wider area um, it doesn't dig in anywhere near as much it's a lot easier to flatten while it's still wet so we're going to do that now same start from the bottom pull up don't really want to go past much past your head height because then it becomes quite difficult to control the spatula. You can see these lines here. This is just where the plaster is quite wet. On the second time of running the speed skin over, they will disappear. So this is just an initial flatten. Ceiling height is about 2.5 meters, I think. Um, it's just, it's just out my reach, which is a pain. <laughs> so I need to use a hot up to get it tight in the corner. And the corners here really dig the speed skim in. Oh, we shouldn't call this a speed skin, it's an insult to the Rafuna one. Okay, so that's all now being flattened off. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave that for a while just to let that pick up, maybe five or ten minutes, and then we're going to do the same thing again. And what it'll do is it'll just take out these last few spatula lines. If you're 
sponge coating, which there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong, it's a love-hate thing. Some, think, some people think it's terrible. It's an excellent method of plastering, especially if you're new. What you want to do is you want to leave this for about uh, five or ten minutes, spat it, and then immediately spray it um, and sponge that. If you uh, sponge it now, you can see how wet it is. Um, the sponge will do nothing. Um, you need the plaster to have pulled in a bit so your fingers aren't digging in, but the top of the surface is still a little bit greasy. That's the perfect time to spray it. Um, also another good guide is if you're using a sprayer at about a foot from the wall, if using a reasonably light haze you're getting dimples in the plaster, that's a good sign that the plaster is too wet. Unfortunately I don't have a sponge float with me here today so we won't be using that method, we'll be using the traditional uh, type of plastering. But if you're new, thoroughly recommend buying sponge float. Okay so now we're going to uh, look at doing the first wet trail. Um, time on it is about two hours and 38 minutes. Now admittedly uh, the set is running a bit long um, and the reason probably is because this is a new build there's uh, there's obviously nothing in it there's no heating on um, you know it's obviously the screed on the floor is is the floor you know um, so it is quite cold so you would expect to be doing the wet trail a little bit sooner than this you do want the first wet trowel to be reasonably dry because um, the wetter it is, the, the plaster is on the wall, uh, when you then start adding water to it, it will just be taking off copious amounts of plaster, which is not really what you want to do. Well, we're going to start anyway, and I might as well be here till tomorrow. First thing you want to do is just brush the corners a bit. What I quite like to do is just run the toe of the trowel into the corner like this just to crisp up that line and then just I'm pushing pretty hard now um, so I just I like to get the corners really nice and neat now what's quite important is so once you've done that is trowel downwards again I'm pushing pretty hard brush What is quite important, you'll see you get quite a lot of fat coming off the trowel, coming off the wall and staying on the trowel. You don't want to keep this on the trowel for too long because, again, it will contribute to tiger marks. So scrape that off. Just scrape it onto the edge of the bucket, clean your trowel. Now, what you'll find is there are really three methods of applying water you've got a spray bottle, or you've got flicking water or you can just brush it um, they're all pretty good I personally just like to just brush the wall uh, it's how I was taught um, to find what works best for you um, I don't particularly like flicking water because it's a little bit difficult to control it. but I'm just pushing pretty hard overlapping where I've been by about an inch or so. Each time you do a trowel over the wall, a pass, so uh, flattening in your two wet trowels, etc. Each time the trowel is opened up a little bit more. So again, quite a bit of fat coming off. That's just where the wall is just a little wetter than I generally like it. Yeah, wipe it off on the bucket. So again, I like to just really push quite hard in the corner. Yeah, 
I wipe the rubbish off. So not sure where, how well that's coming out. Let's just have a first wet trowel. And what we'll do now is we'll just repeat the same process and go through uh, all of the walls, all the way around doing exactly the same thing. Okay, so this has now had a first wet trowel. You can see from walls. So what we're going to do now is we'll leave it about uh, 20 minutes or so and then we're going to do another wet trowel. This time I'm actually going to go side to side so it'll work as a second wet trowel slash a cross trowel. Uh, hopefully that will leave it in a good enough condition that we can just do one dry uh, trowel with a plastic trowel and then that should be uh, good to go. It is hanging a little bit as mentioned already uh, with it being so cold in here. It does seem to be dragging a little bit. I think it's just ticked past three hours. You would expect it to be a little bit faster, certainly if you're working in somebody's house, uh, but on a, on a new build, um, like I say, with no heating in it, it, it does seem to be dragging out a little bit, uh, which is a little bit annoying, um, but it's getting there. Okay, so we've had about uh, 10, 15 minutes has gone by. So what we're now gonna do is a second uh, wet trowel, uh, but this time we're actually gonna trowel it uh, across the wall. So it kind of doubles up as a cross trowel as well. Ideally you want clean water, so uh, it's worth switching the water out. I must admit, I can't be bothered, so I'm not going to. Um, but you will get a nicer result. If you're not gonna use clean water, you have to make sure that no water is really left on the wall um, as you're troweling up. So it's almost like you want to cut the water off as you're going along. So, put the wall down. We're going to open the trowel up now a bit more. About 45 degrees. And this is good. Stick the toe in the, toe of the trowel in the corner. Again, so before, you really want to try and keep your trowel nice and clean. You shouldn't be getting much plaster coming off the wall now. If you're getting stuff coming off, it's probably still too wet. Quite firm now, so you can get away with using one of the flexible trowels. But because my carbon steel trowel is quite worn in, it's quite sharp, uh, I'm not going to. So, same again, just brush the ceiling line, throw the trowel, just dig that in. It just keeps that nice and crisp. Pushing quite hard. Where are they? the water just drips down, just brush that off. 
Okay, about 45 degrees, and it's almost like it's almost like you're slicing off the top bit of plaster. It's just mostly just fatty water. You don't want to keep that on your trowel. That's where really you want to use clean water because clean water, you'll have an awful lot less of that colour water, that sort of fat coming off. I'm not sure how well that shows up on the camera. Hopefully. You can see that it's come out reasonably nice. There's no fat marks anywhere. Yeah, it's not great lighting in here, I'm afraid. When you've done all the prep work early and ahead of time, uh, that helps um, the fact that you're not filling in with any kind of fat or anything like that. It just looks like a more professional job. It looks like sort of like you knew what you were doing. It just overall gives a, a nicer finish. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that same cross trowel through the other two walls and we'll see what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, so, all the walls have had two wet trowels now, the second one being uh, a cross trowel. They're all looking pretty nice. You can see they've come out very nice. What we're going to do just to finish is we're just going to use a plastic, uh, this is the Nella, whatever they call their plastic trowel system. Um, just to do a dry pass over the whole thing. Um, it doesn't take very long, but it just gives that really nice silky uh, eggshell smooth finish that you get. Um, what it also does is if you have got any uh, water left on the wall, it just takes these out. So you just want to try and do your best to keep this clean. It's an awful lot harder when you're holding a camera. But you're just looking to go. On the bottom. Nice. Long strokes. Just as a final pass. The wall has actually come out quite nice on the second wet trowel. To be totally honest with you, you could probably get away with not doing this. But as it's a hallway and people like to run their hands down it, it's nice just to make the extra effort really. It's the sort of finish you're looking to trying to achieve because it's plastic it's not really polishing up the up the wall at all and there we go we now finished. That's the trowel only wall without the speed skim and the other walls.
using the speed skim. So that is how you plaster a wall from start to finish. So hopefully this has helped. I'm giving you a rough idea on, on timings and the procedure on uh, uh, how you can plaster all. As mentioned, um, if you're new to plastering, I really would recommend or suggest uh, looking into the sponge float method as well. It's an awful lot easier way of plastering, um, especially if you're new. Um, and for those that aren't using speed skims or spatulas, uh, it is an awful lot easier. It's, uh, it's a reasonably new tool, which makes an awful lot of difference. Uh, thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. Uh, by all means, uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you like. Uh, it'd be lovely to see you in the next video. Thanks.